Oh, hey there. Got you that thumbnail, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> I'm Simitoskin. This is Sakura Spirit. Uh, actually, let's, let's, let's learn about YouTube for a second, because I've been seeing a lot of comments that are like, oh, boobs in the thumbnail. And if you guys haven't realized it yet, especially over the last few years, really, like, clickbaity thumbnails and titles are what YouTube is all about right now in its current state. Just, just think about all the channels you watch and how many of them have like photoshopped, interesting looking thumbnails and like titles that are all in bold and like say something that makes you wonder what they're talking about. That, I mean, literally, literally the first thing you see is the thumbnail and the title. And if you're not like a diehard fan of that channel, that's what's going to make you want to look at it or not. You know, that's what's going to pull you in. People have never heard from the channel or they're just like searching the stuff. They're going to see that thumbnail and be like, I want to look at that. At least 60% of what you do, if you're, if you're trying to do YouTube, tips, 60% of everything you do is based on your thumbnail and your title. And the gameplay, it, it matters. I mean, but like, like look at this. The, this, what this video is. This is a book with pictures. And it's doing like better than <laughs> most of the series that I do just because of the thumbnail. Uh, and it's not, it's most obvious with this series with me because I'm like really like at the <laughs> clickbait. But if you go to anyone's channel, I mean, even like the top guy on YouTube right now is like a Photoshop master in comparison to me. It's just, just think of it. It's, it's, it's a real thing. And it's kind of sad. I mean, it's important to have good videos because that keeps people coming back to the next one. But the initial clicks all come from the thumbnail. You're welcome. You learned something. You learned something today. Go, go be, go be a YouTuber now. You know everything you need to be. Clickbait. That's what it's all about. And you can be mad at me for saying that, but literally everyone does it. Anyway, so in the last episode, what happened? We got hit on by all the ninja girls. That's what happened. Yeah, like I showed up in the town, or we showed back in the town, we saved them from the spirit two episodes ago, and now I've just been kind of getting along with them, trying to get to know them. And uh, when they got drunk, the ninja girls are like, just I'm changing in front of you, fix my bra for me. And uh, yeah, I think this is the, the, ne the next day. Maybe the next day. What happened? Uh, I remember exactly what happened in the last screen. I think it was all just together talking to him. How many times did I click? I think they were going to teach me something. Anyway, so let's just continue on and see what's going on. After apologizing to Mio, explaining that I was it was merely a joke, the girl had decided she wanted to train each of us personally. That's right, she wanted to train us. Yep, I was right. Yep, 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 yep. We both waited for Mio to show up for the first part of the program, which was to take place in the town square. It reminded me of a training camp at the dojo, although I had the feeling that this was about to turn into turn out to be more fun. As I waited, I noticed that preparations were being made from what looked like a festival. I asked Narumi about it, she s and she told me that it was an annual celebration happening a few days from now. As we chatted, Mio turned up, sword in hand and a faint smirk upon her face. Perfect. It seems like you're ready. If there's something if there's something every warrior needs, it's strength and discipline. With this in mind, let us start with running laps around the village. What was her voice? Oh, oh, oh no, not not laps. That's all? Yes, those who slack off will be punished. Now run. Without any warning, Mayo drew her sword and pointed. Sounds like we're fighting. Pointed at the two of us. Cringing, Narumi tugged at my arm, making it clear that our teacher wasn't joking. Let's get down to it, shall we? I gave her a country voice just then. Oh no, she's, anno she's enjoying this far too much. Oh. <laughs> it's my favorite voice so far. A lot of you seem to like it, so I'm glad. We will defeat those spirits. Oh boy. Quit your yapping and get to running. Unless you're eager to feel the edge of my sword. Mm. Oh yeah, she's totally enjoying it. Come on, Takahiro Kum. Let's get going. She's not going to be reasonable with reasoned with like this. She's a freaking drill sergeant. As I started to run alongside Narumi, I decided to finally 
take the exor the exercise seriously. All things considered, I was surprised at the pace in Ruby was running at all. Even though I felt like I could brag a bit about my own physical strength, her stamina was clearly superior to mine. After several hours of running, I found myself on my back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My breathing was ragged and heavy. While Narumi was still standing upright, although visibly exhausted, judging from her panting. Mio had also been keeping up with this, and while she was panting too, she looked fit to fight and ready to go. D do you do this every day? Not every day, no. Otherwise, would not get to. Okay, we would, Otherwise, would get no patrolling done. But I, but I cannot fault you for your spirit. You both did well. That was harder than anything we've ever done before. I wouldn't be surprised if Mio-san ends up being the final boss someday. Your strength and stamina are clearly beyond human capabilities. Clearly. Oh, maybe she's some kind of spirit. Here to be mean- well, yeah, here to be mean to us on a superhuman level. Rumi, how would you like to run ten more laps around the village? Oh, no! I'm sorry, Great Mayo. Please forgive me. Oh, oh, just kidding. Do you think we'd be allowed to break if we prayed to the almighty guardian spirit of this village? <laughs> I don't think I read that right. I eyed Mio in an attempt to hold back- In it- as I- blah, blah, blah. Can't read! I'll, whenever I start out, I'm like a little airy with it, and then I like get dizzy, and then I just I lose all concentration. <clears throat> I had Mio as I attempt to hold back a smile, clapping my hands together in a prayer. And Rumi giggled and followed my example. Oh, mighty Mio-sama, you who watch over this village, please bless us with a short break, and maybe a lot of money and beautiful wife. And okay, a break is fine. You two idiots want to break that badly? Fine. I have an idea. Elder Sama needs his bath cleaned. You ought to that ought to loosen you up for the next part of the training. You hear that, Rumi Chan? We get to play at the hot springs. <laughs> yeah! Clapping my hands one final time. I took Narumi and Mio's hand by surprise. Ha! <laughs> and dragged the two girls towards the village elder's house. Let's go, hoes! <gasps> ah, what are you doing? Let go of me! Right this instant! Oop! Oh! That's steam. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Mio san. I hate saying the sans and sans and coons and coons and. It won't do you any good to be serious like that all the time. Let's have some fun. The three of us quickly reached the hot springs and were soon preparing to begin our work. However, it didn't take long for the somewhat serious cleaning work to turn into a series of silly games as I started chasing Narumi around with a soap-soaked sponge, shouting in a nefarious tone. I'm the soap monster! Prepare to be washed, foolish warrior! Oh no! The evil soap spirit has appeared! Do not fear, citizen of Hot Spring Village! Ha! <laughs> the girl grabbed her mop and thrust it forwards, brandishing it like Mio would have her katana. I am the village protector, Sundiro Mio. I will vanquish all who oppose me. Oh. Will you two stop messing around? We have work to do. It is dreadful, Mio, nemesis of all spirits. It's the dreadful Mio, nemesis of all spirits. Today is the day you fall. Yaw, never! I will defend this place until my last breath. Oh. Branching her mop in a candid fashion, she clearly didn't mean to do any real harm. Using my sponge, I batted away with ease. Then today shall be your last. I told you to knock it off. I laughed menacingly when a playful push from Rumi caught me off guard. I staggered backwards, my foot slipping on a bar of soap. Ha! <laughs> Someone dropped the soap. You know what that means. With a startled yelp of surprise, I felt myself topple backwards, bumping into Mio. Yep. <laughs> I lost my balance completely. Let's talk about how she just fell. Oh yeah, you know where that's going. I let go of the sponge, sending it flying towards Narumi, who caught it in the face. <laughs> I moved forwards to apologize to the woman when, from behind me, I heard a yelp and a loud splash. Uh-oh. I... I don't want to look, do I? Yeah, you do! Yeah, you want to look! As I slowly turned around, my fears seemed to have been confirmed. Pulling herself from the water as was Mio, soaked from head to toe. 
The anger that radiated off her face made her look like the devil himself. You too. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was Takahiro kun's fault. It's, he started it. Traitor. You can't blame me for. My eyes caught sight of Mio's clothes, which I'd finally noticed had turned see through. Dot, dot, dot. I bet he did it so he could see you're soaking wet like last night. That that wasn't part of the plan. What plan? Oh, he's joking. It was just a joke. Seriously, Takahiro Kun and I were just playing around. It was an accident. Please forgive us. Y yeah, you should forgive us. We were just having a bit of fun. We didn't mean to have it turn out like this. Oh, he's right. I told you both not to play around. I told you both to keep working. Ikage, I will deal with you later. Leave! Takahiro, you need to be punished. Now. Oh, I'm gonna be punished, everybody! Oh my god! <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? That's not fair! It was an accident! It was an honor to have fought alongside you, Narumi-chan. My will has not yet been written. But I leave all my belongings to anyone who wants it. I'm not leaving. If you're going to punish him, punish me too. Oh. Besides, I bet you're only doing this because you want to spend more time with him. What? Th that's ridiculous. Whatever gave you that idea. I I don't even like him. Besides, you're the one spending too much time with another oh, fighting over me. Fantastic. Oh uh, yeah. H hold on. What are you talking about? Oh, admit it. You're just because I got to spend more time with him than you. Busted! That's complete nonsense. I just want to spar with him. Shut up, Narumi. Takahiro, prepare yourself. We're going to spar right now without Narumi and her big butt interrupting us. Hey, now I know you're jealous. My figure is divine. Spar right here? Right now? But you're soaked. A warrior should not worry about such things. Battles can be fought in the lashing rain or beneath the burning sun, but they must be fought. <laughs> she just wants to show off her goods. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. Am I? I sighed deeply as I took on a combative stance. I still got her. I still got her voice stuck in my head, certain that something was going to end up going wrong. Sucked as she was, funny against me, someone who uses grapples and throws. She was practically asking for trouble. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to grasp and throw her all over the place. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is a perfect opportunity. Sometimes your greatest strength can become your own worst enemy. Get in here, Takahiro. We will spar like this, knee deep in water. This will be a fine test of your skills. The girl made her way to the edge of the water and grabbed the discarded mop. It took a lot of willpower not to glance at her soaked figure as her clothes clung to her body. I eventually made it into the water. I thought I was already in the water. Taking defensive stance as she moved back towards the center of the pool. Rumi, if you interfere, I will inform Elder Sama of the fate of his dearly beloved old teddy bear. The one you used as a... <laughs> what? Wait, what? What did she use a teddy bear for? Uh, <laughs> la 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 la, no one has to hear anything! Fine, I'll stay put. You'll need someone to haul your body from the water once Takahiro comes down with you anyway. Mm. That's right, that's right. Isn't that blackmail? Oh, it's blackmail, all right. Now, prepare yourself. Ooh. The attack came a lot faster than I anticipated. Blah, 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 blah. Skip the words, I don't care. The wooden shaft aimed squarely at my midsection. Oh, I, I, for some reason I thought of his testicles. Mm, those testicles. Hit me straight and hard. Hmm. That's what she said. Knocking me back a few steps. I hissed. <laughs> I hissed as the pain for the impact spread, flexing my arms out. Mio sloshed forwards, waves of water splashing aside as she stomped onward. I pushed myself upwards. Dodging another strike from to my left. Go, go, Takahiro Kun! I moved in closer, trying to make her thrust less effective thanks to the length of the mop handle, and aimed a blow towards her shoulder. 
To my surprise, she took the hit without moving an inch. If you're not going to put everything you have into this, you might as well stop your. You might. You might as well stop calling yourself a man. Oh, going for his pride. Hmm. She's fighting on a mental level. Dang. My eyes narrowed a little, and I pulled back as I pulled back as a wide strike sought to sought to slam into my side. Growling, Urgh. I felt my anger flare. I quickly lashed out, smacking the mop handle away forcefully, and used the opportunity to get close once more. I managed to land a few jabs against her midsection and one in her shoulder before darting backwards as best I could in the water. She appeared winded for a moment or two before she spun the mop in her hand, pushing forwards again. Takahiro kun! Takahiro kun! Takahiro kun! Her next strike was a downward slash, which I caught between my hands. Haha! -ha. With a grin, I pulled hard on the stick and flung my foot upwards in an attempt to land a kick. Ha! <laughs> I like acting this stuff out now. She did the only sensible thing and let the mop and let go of the mop, which let me toss it aside with ease. A swordsman without a sword can't hope to be an experienced martial artist. This match is lost. Surrender. Hmm. I suppose I have no choice. As soon as she said that, she spun around, lashing her leg upwards in a roundhouse kick that caught my jaw, knocking me back, almost landing me on my rear. Overconfidence gets you killed. The fight isn't over until your opponent is down. She stood in front of me, her fist raised in a stance I did not recognize. It, if she was quicker without a weapon than with, I didn't stand a chance of beating her. Her kicks were powerful, and the ache of my jaw reminded me that she had plenty of stamina to go off of. The only way I could stop her was to use that. That's not the way to win a fight, you know. I stepped forward purposely. I didn't need to attack her, just get close. A few steps and I had her right where I needed her, cornered and unable to get past me. <laughs> I'm about to pull some creeper level stuff here. <laughs> I took another step. She darted to one side, trying to get past my blockade. I looped an arm around her waist and braced myself for the counterattack I knew would follow. My leg lifted to apply my leg my left leg applied pressure against her knees, sending her down and onto them while my other arm grabbed her arms high above her head. My weight pressed against her body. Did I just like, slam her down? <laughs> just lay on her? No! Yay, yeah, Takahiro used a submission hold! Quick save. I held her tightly, but not enough to cause pain. All I had to do was to lower my right hand, which in return would pressure her, bo her on her body. I did so slowly, showing her just what she was up against. Do you give up? Yeah, f f f fine, you win! I grinned widely, chuckling to myself. I slowly helped her to her feet, gradually releasing my hold. Try not to struggle when I release you, otherwise. But it was too late. Before I had a chance to warn her about the problem with what that particular hold, she pulled away from my grip. The angle of her arms and the tightness of my arms around her waist caused her clothes to tighten as she is it gonna rip her clothes off? Really? What kind of hold is that? Blood circulation had a tendency of getting cut off, occasionally causing people to faint. In this case, however, it was her clothes that paid the price for her impatience. Aw, yeah, girl. And she's laying down all of a sudden. Rip! Rip! As the girl turned to face me, her clothes tore, scattering into tiny pieces in the wind. That's what clothes do, they just shatter into little pieces. They don't just like, become two pieces when they rip. Or just one big piece still. Time seemed to slow to a halt as Mio looked down at herself, let out a scream, and just barely managed to cover herself. M m mio You... I, I tried to warn you, I swear this isn't some kind of a secret <laughs> judo technique. You, you stay back, N Narumi. Oh, yes, Meo-chan. Please g get me a change of c c clothes. It must be cold. 
Yes, right away. I'll be back as soon as possible. I promise. For some reason, I'm feeling less like a hero and some sort of and, and more like a villain. Narumi quickly rushed off, leaving Mio and her, myself to ourselves. I felt different from last. It felt different from last night. I felt like I was walking on thin ice, as though one wrong word and she would have to resent me the same way she resented spirits. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean for it to end up like this. It was an accident. So you found my weakness. <laughs> what? Her weakness is her clothes? Uh huh? No, I swear it was just an accident. That hole usually makes your clothes tighter. Not that I can't move. I, I have perfected every area of b being. Wait, I have perfected every area of b being cool and un she's cool and unrelenting. E except n n nakedness. It's uh, embarrassing. Aww. <laughs> uh, I don't think you have anything you need to hide. I mean, you should be proud of your body. It's n not that. The, the thought of people staring at me, it makes me feel dizzy. Like, I can barely think. I actually uh, admire that about Narumi. She d doesn't have a single ounce of shame in her. I like how she's just like, oh, I'm naked. Uh, I feel so, I feel so strange right now. Let me just tell you all about it. Well, I think Narumi would be the exception. Most girls would probably get embarrassed at being seen naked. I'm sure Narumi will be here with your clothes soon. I am not most girls. I shouldn't get incapacitated this easily. It's infuriating. I lose all c control of myself. I'm not sure, but maybe it's something you'll be able to train. A weakness to- How would you train that? <laughs> Just run around naked? Uh... <laughs> can, can we do it now? Perhaps if you s see... She began stammering uncontrollably, <laughs> blushing from ear to ear. Unable to finish her sentence, I began to panic. I had never seen a girl get this worked up before. Wow, this is- This is so awkward. <laughs> this is not even like... A fantasy moment. I can't, well, maybe it is for some people, but it's just this is weird. This is really weird. Um, I think it would be better if you asked the Rumi about that. B but that won't work. I don't get like this when it's only g girls around. Uh, I guess, but she's like Rumi's gonna show back up before anything happens anyway. I felt as though every male in both worlds were cursing me for my indecisiveness. At this moment, a pretty girl stood before me, suggesting that I look at her naked, all for the sake of making her less embarrassed in the future. How could I call myself a man if I declined such an invitation? But are you really okay with, uh, me? I can't th think of anyone else to, to do it. Please, Takahiro, th look at me. Was this really happening? <laughs> That's what I'm asking. If it was, this is the best type of training I'd ever experienced. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Jeez. This is just... It's too much. It's too much, really. Get back on my ears, glasses. Now come on, get back in there. As Mio began to move her arm, I turned my head. Unfortunately, at that very moment, the door slammed open and then walked... Mako and Machiko, wrapped in towels. It was nice of Elder Sama... She had super country. It was... It was nice of Elder Sama to allow us to use the baths. It was nice to... Takahiro! Ha 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 ha! Takani and Sunday Tyrant are doing naughty things! <laughs> Wait, that... This this is not what it looks like. Ah! I thought she said she didn't mind if girls were around. <laughs> and with that... The girl fainted again. She fainted already? Slipping to the water before I had a chance to react. Oh, wait, I was talking about before. Our last... Our last thingy we did. <laughs> it took a considerable amount of effort to convince the others that nothing unholy had been taking place. Thanks to Narumi's testimony, coupled with Mio's ap apparent habit of freezing, they believed me. However, as I turned to leave, Narumi dragged me off to the side. It seemed like she wanted me to come see her later that evening, 
in return for saving my hide. Uh oh. I can't really see a way to, for me to weasel out of, of that, so I reluctantly agreed. That evening, I excused myself and made my way to Narumi's home, knocking lightly on the door. Hey, Narumi, are you there? Aw, uh, just a moment. The door's open, but don't come in yet. Curious. I found myself wondering what the girl had... I had Wait, what'd that say? I thought it said I had planned. I curious what the girl had planned. Perhaps she was preparing a meal or something to surprise me with. Some sort of present, or maybe she wanted to talk. Whatever the reason might have been, Narumi's voice once again sounded from within the house. Okay, you can come in now, Takahiro-kun. Feeling kind of excited, I opened the door and walked in. The door slid shut behind me. Magically, or did I close it myself? I kind of wonder. The room was darker than I remembered, and it occurred to me to hunt for a light. Foolishly, I began searching for a light switch. Then I remembered that something like that was unlikely to exist here. I managed to locate a small lamp and a nearby box of matches, lighting it with ease. Turn around, Takahiro Kun. <laughs> Hey, my! Is she, she, like, having a mud bath? Or is it chocolate? Oh, I hope it's chocolate. <laughs> I turned around and my eyes bulged. Standing before me was Narumi. Only, she seemed to be dripping. <laughs> Taking in the view, I let out a shriek. A shriek? For a moment, I expected to see the slime girl. But then I noticed the smell of chocolate in the air! It's chocolate! Lick it off me, Takahiro Khan. <laughs> Jeez, these girls. Am I like the only guy in the whole village? Anyway. P please tell me you're not possessed by some kind of chocolate spirit. I instinctively found my eyes drifting along Narumi's chocolate coated figure, trying to find any sight that's, that a spirit should be involved. When I found none, I felt myself growing increasingly nervous. Of course not, silly. Do you like it? Do you think it suits me? All sweet and delicious? Well, I, I mean, you're sweet and all, but and, and not because of the chocolate. What, what in the world happened? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Don't worry about the little details. Do you want a taste? T taste? Yeah, that's what I was told anyway. You put something tasty on your body and let someone else eat it. That's how you get close to people in your world, right? I think it was called inter... intime... intimacy? Hold on, did someone tell you to do this? Because you do realize there's no way this won't turn into s s s s I stood... <laughs> okay, I stuttered as Narumi stepped closer. Her pose causing me to swallow. Trying to find my best to resist the temptation. Why does he always want to resist the temptation? He should just be like, all over that. <laughs> so, so stupid. Anyway, at this rate, getting a, getting a stomach from eating all that chocolate, getting a stomach ache from eating all that chocolate would be the least of my worries. What's wrong, Takahiro-kun? Don't you want to be friends? Or don't you like chocolate? I have some honey, too, if you prefer that. I love chocolate, but I don't think honey will be any better. I don't get it. What's wrong? Yeah, for real, Taki. You're hurting your feelings, Taki Hero. You're hurting your feelings. Is it because of me? I bet if Mi uh, Mayo or Chichan did something like this, she'd be eating away right now. The day Mio <laughs> coats herself in chocolate is the day pigs fly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Should never do something like this. But I still don't get why you're not enjoying this. Did I do something wrong? Uh, Narumi, you see, this is usually something people do when. You know. Oh, 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 wow. I, uh, oh, wow. Uh, so I guess I messed up pretty big, didn't I? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to kick that shrine spirit butt next time I see her. Oh, how could you not know that? Even if I'm from a different world, I'm naked, eat stuff off my body and we'll be best friends forever. Wait, Shrine Spirit? Did Sayuri put you up to this? Yeah, she told me this would help us bond or something. 
well, I guess we shouldn't let all the chocolate go to waste. Oh, God dang it. Always, people are so nosy. There's like no private time. Like if the main character is anywhere, everyone has to come there. I want to lick the chocolate off her body. Narumi, I need to talk to you about what the heck is going on in here? Quick save. Your vice captain is possessed by a chocolate spirit. <laughs> Ch chocolate. Do I look like an idiot? This is because earlier, isn't it? No, no, no it's not. Oh, no, it's not. I promise. <laughs> Someone just gave me a really, really, really bad advice. Really? Well then, allow me to give you some good advice. Go and get yourself cleaned up. Now, before anyone else sees you like this. How about we just both eat the chocolate, you know, that's what I'm saying. Honestly, you were the face of this village. You could have been called to defend it at any moment. Do you think yourself capable at a state like this? I think most people would- I am not finished! Narumi, you were sleeping in my spare room tonight. Takahiro, clean up this mess. If you do not complete this task before morning, you will not get to sleep. Well, of course not. It'd be morning, duh. And if you do not complete this task before breakfast, you will not get any breakfast. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? I sighed and shouted an angry... And shouted... I sighed. The shouting and angry glares from the samurai girl made me feel a bit too intimidated to decline her demands. As she marched and dejected, the still chocolate-coated girl at <laughs> the house... She, and still chocolate-coated girl... As she marched the dejected and still chocolate covered girl out of the house, shielding her with an old robe, I took a look around. It was going to take me hours to get rid of this chocolate. If Ichikawa ever finds out about this, he's going to give me heck. It had been a week since I came to this world. I spent my days helping out around the village and training with Mio and Narumi. I even tried my hand at repairing some of the damage done by Sakura. Sakura. I don't know how to say it. People tell me all the time, but I always forget. I don't care. I'm American. I say what I want. America! I still had no clue where I was, but I was enjoying the time spent here. Everything reminded me of things. Everything reminded me of things I had read about in the school history books. From the buildings to the people. <clears throat> I looked at the nearby girls and let out a sigh. The history books never said anything about fox girls or spirits. There were mentions of them in various religious texts, but they weren't real. So, you're sure this wedding sash will be able to get me back to my world? In the end, Mako had been able to research the spell even further. In the end, Mako had been able to research the spell even further. Have made huge progress over the past few days. Maybe having is the word that should be there. Um, hey y'all, <laughs> Siri was able to, yeah, I have to like, get myself back into the voices. Siri, Siri, was, well, Siri was able to provide some details. She believes that the spell will return something to where it belongs. I suppose it's worth a try. It will work, I know it will. It just needs some time to prepare. I forget her voice that I gave her. I'm not sure if I should be grateful or worried. Still, I didn't think you'd be able to figure it out so fast, Mako. Ha ha he! Oh, no, no, wrong voice. Ha ha ha! He 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 he! Yup! Magic is super easy! Just a wave and a flash and it's done! Maybe that's the voice I'll give her. Except. Hey, y'all! <laughs> Except the time it will take you to prepare the ingredients, do, you under do not underestimate the arcane arts. I am sweating. Why am I so freaking hot? Whew! Open this door. It's all that, that sexy time we just had. Uh, do I underestimate the arcane arts, Mako? You have a gift. Make sure you treat it with the respect it deserves. A wave and flash. Mm, I'm not going to end up exploding into fireworks or something, right? Absolutely not. I guarantee it. Don't worry, Takani. I won't do anything that'll hurt you. I hope. Unless you happen to be made of gl uh, clay, glass, wood, or stone, these all seem to shatter when you try to cast a spell on them. Oni-sama, you didn't have to tell him that! Oh boy. Good thing the human body is mostly made up of water. Let's take a break. I'm feeling a bit... distracted by the younger girl's excitement. 
and I didn't notice a sweat had started forming on my forehead, a sudden dizziness coming over me. Without warning, I collapsed onto the ground, my breathing heavy and ragged. My vision faded, and the girls ran towards me, shouting my name in concern. Dot, dot, dot. How many dots are there? Six. No, is it? Wait, yeah. Dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 dot. I slowly regained consciousness, opening my eyes to take in the familiar surroundings of the room I'd occupied during the stay with us, with this unfamiliar world. I was surprised to find the two spot. Shut up. I was surprised to find the two fox spirits in the room with me, seemingly in the middle preparing something. Takakum, it's good to see you awake again. We were, you were unconscious for quite some time. How are you feeling? A bit tired, but I'm okay. What happened? You sprung quite a high fever. I have prepared some food for you. It would be ready soon. Make your chance preparing a spell that will hopefully improve your condition. I think you have a cold. You were so hot and sweaty. Don't, do you run a temperature when you have a cold? I, <laughs> I never just like, oh, I have a cold, like temperatures and sweating and like in the bed. Anyway, I had to get rid of your clothes to wash them. <laughs> I'm always naked. My head felt a little bit dizzy from the rest, but it was probably from, but I was probably just exhausted from the constant training. I guess even a hero gets sick sometimes. It took me a moment to realize that Machiko, what Machiko had said. Raising the blanket, I found myself left in nothing but a pair of shorts. I instantly blushed. Why would you take my clothes? Being near naked in the presence of someone as pretty as Machiko, I kept the blanket closed enough to be a second layer of skin. I'm almost ready, Onisama! Machiko suddenly slipped past me, startling me in the process as her hands gently grasped my shoulders pulling me against her. None of our robes fit you. This is the best we could do. I need you to relax. Easier said than done. Who would be able to relax with the girl hugging them? That lack of clothes only made me more nervous. Just lean back against me and watch. Mako-chan is about to give you a demonstration of her powers. It would be rude not to pay attention, and I would hate to have to punish you for being rude. <coughs> As those words were whispered into my ear like the temptations of a succubus, I kept my eyes on the younger sibling. The sight of the fox spirit seemingly in the middle of preparing some sort of ritualistic spell caused me to momentarily forget about my embarrassment. Don't be alarmed if you feel any unusual sensations. Once the spell takes hold, it will usually take a few moments to flow through you. Feel free to grab hold of me if you need to. Oh yeah. Look at the microphone off my face. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, one of the, oh, so soft, like a boob. Uh. Anyway. Despite my attempt to protest, I decided that it was best not to worry too much about it. It wasn't like she was going to blow me up or anything. As though in a daze, I watched the small glowing orbs started to gather in the room. Uh, I, really, I really can't read anymore. It's so freaking, I'm sweating. I'm kind of still like dizzy from constantly reading and like <sighs> being airy about it, but I have to be so quiet to not do that. Anyway, uh, she started her spell. Maybe I should accept Mikcho's inv Michiko's invitation before something <laughs> blew up in my face. Ah, hua! Ooh, fire! As I watched the girl begin to swirl her arms around, tiny balls of light like fireflies began to appear in the vortex of her hand swirling, spinning around her. And these sentences are so long, and oh my gosh, who's writing this? Uh, they're all... They're all run-on sentences. The light had a warm feeling to it, but not hurtful to the eyes. But... <laughs> but more intense than a candle or a, or a light bulb. Finally, she began to move her whole body. A dance of sorts that made the light flare even brighter. It makes me jealous seeing her like this. Not of her powers, but of her beauty. In this moment, she is the most beautiful creature in the world. She looks the same as she always does, right? She's just using magic. I won't disagree with you there. Ah, uh, 
But would you choose her over me? Which do you like better, maturity or youthful vigor? Or perhaps a, a stern Sundari is more your type. Or are you- am I going to get to make a choice soon? I could tell she was poking fun at me, despite my current state. I was about to offer a reply in return, but I felt a strange tingle inside of me. It felt similar to the sensation of swallowing fizzing candy only throughout my entire body. Oh, this feels weird. And done. He didn't even explode! Yay! Wait, what? Tell me, do you feel any better, Takakun? I I feel a bit weird. Like my entire body is tingling. I really hope I won't explode. <laughs> if you're going to explode, you've done it by now. You'll be super fine in no time at all. Dinner, dinner. What? <laughs> <laughs> Almost as soon as she had finished her spell, Mako clutched her head in her hands and fell to her knees. Chico seemed as startled as myself by Mako. Mako suddenly display a pain. That's how I should talk with the other girl. As I tried to get back to my feet, Chico rushed to her side. Maiko, you need to show more restraint. Please lie down, Takakun. Can keep but this is how I was talking about her earlier, wasn't it? Takakun can keep an eye can you keep an eye on her? I'm going to prepare something that will help her. Uh, of course. Come, Mako. You should lie down over here. Finally regaining my footing, I made my way over to Mako's side. After seeing her sister was left in good hands, Chico left her room, leaving me alone with the groaning girl who had been struck by a nasty headache after casting a spell. Oh, Onisama, talking he. Don't worry, Mako-jan. I'm sure your sister will be back soon. Try to relax a bit until then. Talking he, do you like Onisama? Where did that question come from? Why, everybody wants to know who I like. Onisama asked, but you never answered. I don't mind, you know, if you like Onisama over me. I'm sure... I'd sure like it if you like me, though. Uh, um, how do I explain this? I'll pause briefly, trying to think of a good way to respond. When I finally decided to play it safe, I raised a hand and gently patted the girl head, the girl's head, offering a warm smile. I like you both, just like I like Narumi Chan and Mio. You're all friends I've managed to make, managed to make in this world, this new world. I'm friends owning everybody. No, silly, of course you like all of us, but who do you, you know, like like? Only someone was asking you about your type, and I know what that means. Oh, you mean it like that. Uh, to be honest, I've been focusing too mu so much on my G- You have not? You've been focused- no, never mind. No, I haven't really- you're just, you're just avoiding the question! God, what a- You just- you have- you could pick from any of these girls. And you're just like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I've been too busy really to notice any of you. <laughs> How about I make you and your sister a promise? A promise? Yeah, a promise. I'm not ready to answer that a question like that. Jido has always been it. That's why I need to get back to my world to win that match. It has been my dream since I was a kid. And real men don't give up on their dreams. I would probably rather just stay in this world if I was him. You, you know. But I'll promise you that after my match, I'll do everything I can to return to this world. This time as a man who will be able to answer your question. So now, so now I'll have a reason to come back here because real man always keeps his promise. <laughs> that makes me so happy. As we sat there for a while, I suddenly heard strange muffling sound. Mako apparently heard it as well, squeaking as she toppled back onto her rear. <laughs> I fell again. I guess it's not all better yet. You probably shouldn't move around too much, Mako. You're probably tired after that thing you just did. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'm fine. Her tail twitched about eagerly behind her, hiking her skirt up high enough to be revealing. Mm, how are you now? You seem to be fidgeting a lot for some reason. No, You're seeing things. I'm fine. Amused by her behavior, I watched on as she curled her hands and twitched her ears, using a voice that I didn't quite, that didn't quite, that didn't quite sound like her. In the back, <sighs> breathe. It's, I opened the door; it's a lot cooler here now. In the back of my head, I found myself thinking that she looked very much like, well, like a cat. Is it normal for a fox to act like a cat? 
I could have sworn he looked ready to pounce a mouse any second just now. Nah, magic me do. Ugh. What did she start saying? Yeah, all the time. Yeah! Magic makes me do weird things sometimes. One time, I only saw my head to get a ladder because I climbed a tree and was building a nest. Speaking of mice, I think Takani looks like one. Wait, I'm totally a Tom, not a Jerry. Huh? Silly Takani. Talking about your world, trying to confuse me, I'm definitely going to pounce on you. My eyes quickly scan the area around me, hoping to find something I can distract her with. At least long enough for Machiko to return. I spotted a long piece of thread off to one side and decided to grab it, dangling it in, dangling it in front of her face. Pounce this instead! Yeah! The girl began to swat and lashing the string, putting a bit of distance between the two of us. Happily, I had managed to prevent another embarrassing scene. I lied back. Only to be greeted by the ever-rising skirt of Mako. It reminded me of, of the exact reason the sisters had gone to the village in the first place. For the panties. <laughs> Wait, Mako, if you jump now, I'll see something that can be, can't be unseen. Your, your skirt is about to... I waved a hand in her general direction, averting my eyes as I tried to hide the blush on my face. What? With a shriek that undoubtedly shook the mansion's very foundation, the girl slammed a hand down to her skirt, hiding herself from... Oh, wait, they don't have panties. I, they said that earlier. Hiding herself in hopes of saving her dignity. Oh, no, I'm not a maid anymore. I can't wear white in my wedding. <laughs> oh, I swear I didn't see anything. You're still totally a maiden. But please tell your sister to get you to some underwear. <laughs> if not for your own sake, then for that of the entire male species... Only some Takadi says we need underwear. As a girl called out, I felt another wave of dizziness washing over me. My vision began to swim, and I felt myself shiver. If this was indeed a cold, it seemed like I had, like I had drawn the short end of the straw. I let out a groan and lie back down again, clutching my own body. Oh, hi y'all! Oh my goodness, Mako, your spell were all faster than expected. Here, Takakun, eat some of this. It will make you feel better. I nibbled on the mixture, yeah, on the mixture Mechiko spoon fed me. It tasted bad, but I feel better. My eyes twitching. What's wrong with him? Fear not, little one. It's some, It's nothing life-threatening. He must have caught quite a bad case. We're fortunate we caught it early. Your spells did wonders, though. His cold just happened to be a lot worse than we thought. Don't worry. If you say so. He'll be fine. His fever's gone down. But he is cold. We will need to warm him up somehow. I'll go get some food. Could you fetch some blankets? Blankets? But I know something that'll warm him up a lot faster. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's a good spot to pause it right there. Ah, uh, whew, man. Oh, wow, this makes me so... Feel so, like, crappy. We'll finish it, though, don't worry. It's not that bad. Whew. Anyway, today's your birthday. Happy birthday. We'll see you guys next time. And I hope you enjoy this. I know you do. I know you made it this far. <laughs> anyway, stay dozy, my friends.